Okay, so in this video, we want to quickly introduce the idea of improper integrals, but first, we have to review the fundamental theorem of calculus. If you recall, which states quite simply that the definite integral of f of x dx from a to b is equal to uppercase f of b minus uppercase f of a, as long as uppercase f is an antiderivative to lowercase f, which of course means that the derivative of uppercase f must be equal to lowercase f. But if you recall, we proved this theorem under two assumptions. The first was that the bounds of integration a and b were finite real numbers, and the second was that on this interval, the function was continuous. So here's the question. Can we still apply the fundamental theorem of calculus if we violate one of the two assumptions? So if we allow a and or b to be infinite, and also f to have a point of this continuity somewhere in the range of integration. And this is these types of integrals where we violate the conditions of the fundamental theorem of calculus are called improper integrals. And because there are two types, there are two conditions, right? The first is that the bounds are finite, the second, that f is continuous on the interval of integration. There are therefore, correspondingly, two types of improper integrals, type 1 and type 2. So type 1 is where we assume f is still continuous on the range of integration, but where we allow either the upper bound of integration or the lower bound or both bounds of integration to be infinite. Improper integrals of type 2 is where we allow the function now to have some point of this continuity somewhere in a finite range of integration. The question is, even though on the surface the assumptions are violated, can we still apply the fundamental theorem of calculus? And the answer is yes, but in both cases it's a two-step process. The first is we have to approximate the integral with another integral where we avoid the problem, either being the infinite bound of integration or avoiding the discontinuity of f between a and b. So we avoid the problem, therefore with the new integral we are now satisfying both conditions of continuity and finite range of integration. So for the approximate integral we can then apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. But of course this will give us an approximate answer to the original improper integral. The question is now, from this approximate answer, how do we go and figure out, if possible, the answer to the original improper integral? And the answer is surprisingly simple, with a limit. And this will make a lot more sense as we work through the upcoming examples.